We got the Pecron E600LFP. Now this is a lithium iron phosphate, really small portable system. And I really like it. It's definitely a little heavy because of the lithium iron phosphate battery, but it's got some really cool features that I wouldn't have expected out of a system like this. I think Pecron has really started to up their game. I think they're a serious player now in the sense that they want to compete with the big dogs and provide high quality equipment. Now, it doesn't have any special apps or battery expandability or anything special like that, but it does have good solar input, high output, wireless charging, all sorts of cool features. So I wanna go over the Pecron E600 LFP for you guys because this could actually be a system that would be really good for carrying around in your vehicle for emergency backup power, for running DC fridges and things like that. And so I wanna take a look at it with you guys so you can know about this option. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So I've tested a ton of units like this size. In fact, I've got a bunch of them behind me, like the GrowWatt Vita 550. I've got the Lion Energy Summit. I've got the EcoFlow River 2. I've got the AC60 from Bluetti. I've got an Oops 1200, the Alpha ESS, Black B or something like that. I've got a bunch of different units that are very similar to this. And this one has simply worked. No finicky stuff, just worked. And that's what I've liked about it so far. So this is it right here, very simple. There's only input and output on one side right here, fans on the sides right here, nothing on the back at all, but we do have a wireless 15 watt charging pad up front. And then on the bottom, you've got just a quick reference to all the specs on it. It does come with a user manual as well as an extended 12 month warranty. You can get an additional 12 months. It comes with this cool carry case right here for all your accessories, which include a wall charger right here, a cigarette lighter adapter, so you can charge from a cigarette lighter port in your vehicle, which most people don't really do, but for a unit this small, it might be practical. Then it comes to this special five pin adapter to MC4 adapter, which is not a common cable, so you will want to make sure you don't lose that. Then of course you got the cable that goes with the power adapter. And then this is really cool. This is a five pin to Anderson power pole adapter. So in the event that your solar panels are Anderson uh, or you want to use an Anderson adapter, not sure why you would because if you had this, but this is just a backup cable for other options. Now the battery is lithium iron phosphate, which means you're gonna get a huge amount of cycles, about 3,500 cycles. What that means is if you were to use this going from 100% to 0% back to 100% every single day for about 10 years, at that point, it will reach 80% efficiency. That means you're never going to use that many cycles. I don't know anyone who would be cycling a system like this every single day like that. Maybe that's you, but the chances are that that's not the case. But it is cool that they're providing lithium iron phosphate because that is the preferred battery type for backup power options. Now what surprised me is the inverter output. It is a pure sine wave inverter, but with these outlets right here, you can get up to 1200 watts output. I thought it was going to be a 600 watt inverter because other units of very similar size are only about a 500 watt inverter. But this has a 1200 watt inverter, which really blew my mind. I was very surprised because with an inverter of that size, you can easily run things like a refrigerator or a chargers for your cordless batteries. You can even run DC fridges, computers, TVs, Wi-Fi, all sorts of stuff off of this. No problem at all. Now keep in mind, the fuel tank size, the battery capacity is only 614 watt hours. And so if you were to run a 1200 watt load consistently nonstop, you'd only be able to run it for about 25 minutes. But if you were to have a 100 watt load, you're easily gonna get about six hours out of it. Now, as far as the outlets, you have your three NEMA 515 plugs here. You've got a typical 10 amp rated DC output here, which is a cigarette lighter port. Your two DC 5525 outlets right here. One 100 watt USB-C, one 18 watt USB-C, and then two 18 watt USB-As. And then an interesting feature, if you push, just click the AC out button, you'll get different readings here on the screen. So this changes showing the voltage output and the power factor right here. And then you can switch it to show how much time is estimated until it runs out. And then if you click DC, it's gonna switch between showing battery voltage and battery charge. This is a 5525 input right here. This is what you would use for your car charger. And then down here is the five pin solar input, which is also the wall adapter input. Now, sadly, you can't use both of these at the same time, but this input right here is rated to 400 watts, which is pretty impressive. And we're gonna test that here in a second. 
But overall, it's just a simple system that works. Now, at one point, I had to go to my off-grid cabin during the winter because I wasn't sure if things were still running smoothly. And oftentimes, the generator that I have there, it has an easy start with a built-in battery and everything, but that battery is lead acid and it tends to die. So when I went up this year, I brought this with me just in case to make sure if I had my own backup battery power so I could recharge that onboard battery for my gas generator in the event that the cabin wasn't working. Now the cabin was working, so I didn't have to use it, but because this is so small, it's really easy to put in my vehicle and take with me. Let's go ahead and get right into the solar test. I wanna show you how well that works. So the last time I used this was maybe just a couple of months ago, and I had this as a backup power source to take up to the cabin with me in my Can-Am. You can see here, it's saying we're at 1%. I have no idea why it would be that low. It should not be that low at all. Let's go ahead and get some solar panels connected to this and charge it up. So it says the charge parameter is 32 to 95 volts and up to 400 watts max. I have three. 200 watt solar panels connected. That's why you can see I'm at 60 volts, which is the max input for this. I'm probably close to 65 volts and that can actually burn up this watt meter. So I wanna get it connected as fast as I can and get that voltage down, putting a load on it and see what kind of input we get. Okay, I do not understand at all why are we only getting a hundred something watts in? There are no clouds. If it says it can do 400 watts max in, why are we not getting anywhere close to that? I'm gonna go ahead and change it down to two solar panels. Okay, it was going up there for a second, so maybe there are a few little clouds. Here we go, 360 on the meter, 330 up here. So there's close to about a 10% difference on what's on the screen versus what's on the meter. Okay, in the user manual, it says it can do 32 to 95 volts. It doesn't show the current or the amps. I hate when they do that. Why not show it? It is part of what's factored in here. Just show it. Well, we are well within the charge parameter on here. The amps seem to be really low because those panels should be doing somewhere around 10 amps. And this is having a hard time going much above six. So the charge parameter on here must be close to around six or seven amps because that voltage is about right. But because that voltage is right, it should be able to put in more amps to get more input. So we're not able to get the 400 watt input, even with 600 watts of panels connected. We're only getting around 360 on the max that was on here and 330 of what was in here. 368 is the highest I've seen get on this Pecron unit. So far, really good input, very close to that 400 watt rating. Not all the way there, but definitely close. So Pecron sent a solar panel as well, actually two of them, and they're actually fairly nice. It's a 36 volt battery. The VOC is 43.2. So let's see how it folds out here. Oh, nice. It's got this bumpy finish. I always like seeing the bumpy finish. Lots of big bus bars here. It's always good. We got junk on the inside. That's not good. But a 200 watt solar panel here, we are starting to get just a tiny bit of hazy cloud cover, but still good sunlight. Let's see how these do. I have two of these I'm gonna hook up to the unit. Make sure you do not grab the cells, but you grab the hinges here. Oh, and this is upside down. It's a lot harder to grab the hinge fabric here in the middle because you don't wanna bend the cells and crack them. That's why I've kind of moved away from these flexible or portable panels. It's because they are really hard to not damage. And that Velcro is strong. And it does have about a 10 foot long MC4 connection here. Now I'm gonna connect these in series, which means I'm gonna put the female of one into the male of the other. And then this is gonna be increasing voltage, keeping the amps the same. And then I just take one solar cable and connect it to this. 
Now in this case, the unit is close enough that I don't have to use a long solar cable, but normally I have it inside far away wherever I wanna run something. So I'm gonna use this five pin adapter. I don't know what they call it, but that's what it is. It's gonna go on this higher voltage 400 watt max input. And then I can just connect wherever these go, which is male, female, male, female, just like that. And then we'll see what our solar input is. I mean, there is just a tiny bit. There's a really, really thin cloud right now. So it may be why we're not getting as much solar input, but we honestly should be getting more. Oh, there it starts to spike up a bit. Yeah, that cloud is gone and we're still getting the same 180 input. I'm gonna go ahead and try something else here. Remember, each of these are 200 watt panels. Let's go ahead and connect one solar panel now and see what we get. Look at the single panel, we're at 172. Is the max input allowed 180? No, because it's rated to 400 watts. Let me quickly swap this back to two panels. Okay, I've got two panels connected back on here. You can see the main where it's branched together and it's going in. Let's see what kind of input we get now. Okay, we just broke 190. I bet this is gonna reset and come back up. Okay, we just beat 200. All right, well, this doesn't make any sense at all. We barely got over 200. I have 400 watts connected. We definitely got way better input with the traditional rigid 200 panels, but these folding peck run panels, they're almost making the same amount of power as just a single panel, but together it doesn't seem to be making hardly any difference at all. I'm gonna switch this back to just one panel. This doesn't make any sense at all because I'm connecting the panels in series, which is within the 95 volt charge parameter, but we're not getting more than a somewhere around 190 to 200 watts in. So the good news is that a single 200 watt panel is making 95% of its rated output, which is extremely good. I do like those panels a lot, but we should be close to 400 watt solar input with two panels and that's not happening. So as you can tell, the best way to recharge this from solar is with different panels other than those Pecron panels. I liked how portable and lightweight those Pecron panels are. So if you need something portable, that could be a decent option, but I definitely got the best input using the rigid panels from poweredportablesolar.com. Getting about 330 watts in is good for a battery that's 600 watt hours. I'm definitely able to recharge it in a single day while still running something like a refrigerator or especially like a DC fridge or recharging my drone or my batteries to my cordless tools. That's where this system really shines. It's not designed for running something like a residential refrigerator. Even though it's capable of doing it, you shouldn't do it. That's really what it comes down to because the battery's not big enough. But I can fully say that this has worked pretty much as advertised. I didn't get the full 400 watts of solar input in, but 330 watts is pretty good. I wish I could have got the 400 watts in because that would have been less than two hours recharge time from zero to full while not having a load on it. And that would have been pretty impressive. So Pecron is definitely stepping up their game. I've been very impressed with them. You may want to consider looking at this unit or I've also tested their E2000 LFP and that's a very good unit. It has expandable battery, high solar input, all sorts of great features. And you can always shoot me an email to info at poweredportablesolar.com and I'd be happy to answer your questions to find out what system is going to work best for you at the best price. I'll have links down below the video for any coupon codes or anything like that I can get for you guys if you're interested in this. Overall, this is something that I think will help people be prepared when they need mobile power for small things. So always remember, be prepared for self-rescue. I'll see you all in the next video.